It is not a long time since Saudi Arabia made its first forays into the dazzling world of entertainment. Boxing matches, horse racing, and music festivals are all parts of a broader project kick-started by Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. Whereas they are hoped to contribute to the diversification of the kingdom's oil-based economy, these popular events pursue, at the same time, an equally important goal to varnish the dented reputation of Saudi Arabia as a country with the least respect for human rights. In one of its latest moves, Riyadh has taken initial steps to become a fashion capital like Milan, Paris and New York, and of course to distract attention from the underbelly of the kingdom. What critics say is an explicit act of fashion washing. In early March, Harper's Bazaar Arabia announced it would be published in Saudi Arabia as the first international luxury fashion magazine. Shortly after, leading men's lifestyle magazine Esquire Middle East said it would publish Esquire Saudi. The publication of these two prestigious magazines in Saudi Arabia is going to come along with a series of luxury VIP parties and workshops from well-known masters in the fashion industry. An impressive schedule per se, critics say is just a pathetic attempt undertaken by a country where women are still viewed as second-class citizens. Saudi Arabia is trying to clean their image after the gruesome murder of Jamal Khashoggi and um, in response to the United States and other countries um, condemning the situation in Yemen. And in order to try to clean their image, um, along with other attempts at uh, whitewashing activities, they are using women. In the words of Ines Osman, director of MENA Rights Group, it does not mean much to show off these beautiful landscapes when so many Saudis cannot enjoy them because they have been imprisoned or living in exile because of travel bans. Welcome, how's your day? <laughs> well, I never thought I'd come to Saudi Arabia, but here I am. <laughs> it's pretty cool, I'm excited. We are so excited because it's the first fashion week in Saudi Arabia. So we are making history and hopefully it's gonna be okay. I was always asking myself, why uh, us Arabs, we have to travel abroad to find our future? Why can't we find our future in our own countries? Whereas the Riyadh government is trying to showcase the country as a suitable place for women through hosting catwalks and glamorous photo shoots, there is a nagging doubt over the real status of women in Saudi society. After all, a considerable number of women's rights activists are still behind bars. This is one of many attempts that Saudi Arabia has and is making to whitewash the crimes that they're committing both inside their country and in Yemen. We've seen this with them uh, bringing sporting events and music events and promoting tourism. And uh, we hope that the world is not fooled and continues to support a real change towards human rights and peace um, in uh, across the Middle East. It was in February when the Saudi authorities agreed to release Lujain al hathloul after the high-profile women's rights activists spent over 1,000 days in detention. Lujain al hathloul is not actually free. Uh, she's under a five-year travel ban, and she's forbidden to um, speak out about what happened. In addition, uh, many of the women's rights activists uh, remain behind bars. 
And um, this, you know, this is a situation that we're seeing across Saudi Arabia as they build themselves as um, modernizing in terms of women's rights. And I want to speak to the, the bravery um, of the women in Saudi Arabia to campaign for women's rights, knowing the um, consequences that they pay these horrific prison terms. It seems that the Saudis are prepared to do anything to misrepresent the reality of women's lives in the kingdom. Here, by covering up rights abuses through fashion runways and magazines. Needless to say, such magazines are contributing to the suppression of women in Saudi Arabia by distorting the reality. A woman's place in Saudi Arabia is totally different from what, for example, Harper's Bazaar shows of Saudi model Talita Tamer in the Gilded Deserts. We at Code Pink think that all companies and organizations have a, re have a responsibility um, not to contribute to human rights abuses. We have been uh, petitioning the lobbying firm in the United States, um, L. S2, uh, that is marketing Saudi Arabia as a trailblazer for women's rights, to drop Saudi Arabia as a client. And we will also uh, be asking the same of these magazines. Besides launching Saudi versions of lifestyle titles, Riyadh has run content partnerships with fashion-oriented publications. For example, Vogue Arabia has recently partnered with the Saudis in whitewashing the plights of Saudi women. I think that many countries are reluctant to do real reforms. Um, Saudi Arabia is only one of many. We can look at uh, the situation in the United States with police brutality and racism against black people and the difficulties, the very uphill battle that we're facing here uh, to do rights reforms. Um, it's unfortunate that companies and organizations are taking part in these uh, uh, faux reforms that are not genuine. And we hope that companies take a real stand for women's rights and for human rights in Saudi Arabia, as well as a real stand to end the brutal war in Yemen. The December 2020 edition of Vogue Arabia published a letter titled, The Future is Promising for Saudi Women penned by Princess Rima bin Bandar, the Saudi ambassador to the U.S. In the letter, the princess boasted, barriers are being replaced by opportunity. Cultural limitations are giving way to social transformation. According to Middle East Eye, the letter got published as a result of a lobbying effort from Hathaway Strategies, an Indianapolis-based public affairs firm which advocates on behalf of the Saudi embassy. Between July and December last year, Hathaway received $75,000 from the Saudi embassy in consulting fees. In addition to um, the fashion, what's being called fashion washing, uh, Saudi Arabia is also uh, using a lobbying firm in the United States, which they're paying um, millions of dollars to, to promote Saudi Arabia as a place of gender equality. Uh, both the idea of fashion washing and promoting Saudi Arabia as a, as a trailblazer for women's rights um, is particularly uh, disgusting, given that uh, the country uh, gives so few rights to women and has imprisoned the very women who continue to campaign for women's rights in the country. The Saudi expensive publicity stunts might brush over human rights abuses for a while, but it cannot save the face of the Saudi authorities forever. As a Saudi activist put it, away from these glamorous events, the brutality goes on.